we looked at what search terms, like generic search terms, uh, people were using to match to our shopping ads. And then we created a generic campaign on text. And once that started selling a decent ROAS, which is, you know, three to five, then we started adding display. So display retargeting and, and dynamic display. Our dynamic display is case study good. We started display in the first quarter of uh, 2019. I'm just looking at it right now. We had a 1.33 ROAS, so it's still profitable. And then uh, by the fourth quarter of 2019, we have 5.3 ROAS for the quarter. And it hasn't gone under that since. This podcast is sponsored by Klaviyo, the email and text marketing platform that puts D2C brands in control. If you're the leader of a D2C brand, you need a platform that hustles as hard as you do. Klaviyo unlocks the power of your e-commerce data so you can personalize and automate messages that keep customers coming back. D2C brands communicate with Klaviyo. Start for free at klaviyo.com slash DTC. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash DTC. Welcome to All Killer No Filler. I'm Eric Dick, and today I am lucky to be with my friend Saul Garcia, head of Google Ads for Pilot House. He's recently uh, created a case study uh, for one of our longest standing clients at Pilot House, with, uh, and it just features some absolutely eye popping, gaudy results with you know over eight million dollars in sales generated at an eight x. That's an 8x return on ad spend uh, with a number of other really interesting insights along the way. Welcome to All Killer No Filler. Saul, could you just start by like setting the stage for this client, uh, how they came to be and, and how they got to these high heights with Google Ads with, with us? Sure. Um, so JBW, he's, they're one of our oldest clients. Um, I think they started with us right at the beginning of Pilot House. So this is, um, I think, January 2019. If, if I'm correct. And JBW has actually been around for the longer. They've been around since 2008. Uh, it's uh, uh, two siblings, Amir and Shavina uh, Megani. They live in Dallas and uh, they created this um, luxury uh, diamond watch brand. Uh, pretty cool designs. And, and they sort of were dabbling in the, you know, in the DTC space. Um, when we first, uh, you know, launched Pilot House back in 2019, uh, and when I joined, um, we had our, our, our Facebook buyer, Nate, uh, who's been on the podcast a few times. Um, he was the guy in charge of, of, of the account. And when I recently, like, you know, it was like, oh, well, we have a Google guy now, so let's, let's get in there. And, uh, basically took the account from, you know, we had, uh, one campaign spending about 50 bucks a day, um, making about a hundred bucks a week um uh, to you know what we're doing right now which is at least a, a bad month right now it's around 350 400,000 dollars a month uh spending about 40,000 50,000 dollars a month so about a, you know between eight and nine times return on spend um and went from you know the one one branded campaign to kind of uh make sure that our facebook spend was being uh, well used to uh using every single uh google channel and every google type of campaign right now so. What do you mean your Facebook spend? You mean your Google ad, your Google spend is well used or is it related to your Facebook spend? It's related. So yeah, one of the things that we always, you know, and, and uh, we, we preach that here at Pilot House is that ecosystem uh, return on ad spend, right? And especially right now, but back, even back then, uh, whatever dollars we spent on Facebook and that brand awareness, even though Nate's campaigns are always, uh, or, or Pilot House in general, our campaigns are usually uh, geared towards performance and, and sales. Um, you still get brand awareness from that, and there are still people that are not gonna buy uh, directly from that click, or that are you know gonna see the ad, come back later. Um, you know the classic, I'll, 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 I'll Google it. Um, and even then, um, JBW was or is a brand that um, not only has a lot of competitors in the same space, uh, people bidding on their brand name, and also uh, resellers. So we wanted to make sure that whatever spend we were putting on Facebook, uh, we were also making sure that we were closing that circle with, with Google. And that was the only campaign that was running when I first started uh, working with them. So 
we've talked about it on the podcast before about scaling uh, Google being more like a plane taking off than maybe a rocket ship of Facebook ads. But to be able to get to the volumes that you have into cold traffic must have taken Ooh. a lot of keyword testing, a lot of how did you think about expanding the campaign? Um, it, it did take a long time. I was just, you know, we have the case study. And, and if you look at the uh, you, you look at the graph from when we first started to today, uh, it took us pretty much from January 2019 to January 2020 to get close to the volumes that we're now. And then obviously um, the, um, you know, the pandemic and the COVID thing um, in, in, in the uh, second quarter of 2020 uh, kind of gave a boost to that trend that was already um, coming from, from Q4 of, of 2019. Uh, what we first did, like obviously at the beginning, the first thing we did is establish a um, a shopping campaign. So JBW didn't have a shopping campaign, so that was one of the first things. And then there, we had um, JBW is very uh, brand conscious, so they have a great brand. They work uh, they work really hard at, at their brand, um, and that includes their, their the, the way their website looks and and and, and the way they they name their their time pieces on online. Um, so as you know, <clears throat> uh, the shopping campaigns <clears throat> work by matching people searches uh, to your titles and descriptions of your products. Um, so some of these titles and descriptions, you know, on the site are very branded. Uh, everyone knows what a JBW heist is if you're into watches, um, but Google doesn't know. So Google sees the word heist and Google thinks you know, you're looking for heist movies or things like that, yeah. right? So um, what we have to do is to not... The first thing we, we, we ask the guys at JBW is like, um, you know, what's your you know, brand brand sensitivity? Do you, Can we change the titles? And obviously the answer was no. <laughs> so the, the, the next thing we did is, okay, no problem. Uh, so we created a manual feed where we could actually um, create our own titles and descriptions using, you know, the actual... Um, keywords that that the google uh, system would will understand like uh let's say uh, a a heist will be jbw uh men's diamond watch mm. heist um which didn't wasn't present in the past the, the algorithm is getting better at matching apis and and titles like that very branded titles uh from other things like schema data and things like that but in the past and and first when we first started with jbw they didn't have that and so, so where are you inserting that text? That's in into your ad text or in into the no, in, into, where's that into yeah, the website? No. So when you that's except no. So you we couldn't do that into the website. So what happened is we created a manual shopping feed into Merchant Center. So uh, people that have e-commerce out there, they will probably know that their Shopify, especially if they have uh, uh, they they haven't sponsored us, but Shopify uh, if they have Shopify um, on um, Shopify has an integration with Google. Uh, which is pretty much an app and the app can take all of your products and just put them on the merchant center, which is the Google, um, where, where products live and then Google can use them to create ads pretty Got much. It. So there's, there, it's a, it's a, it's a two step, uh, process. You, you gotta get a merchant center where you upload your products and then from there they go into AdWords and then you can advertise them on AdWords. So people putting that, <laughs> using that, make sure you're putting your keywords into the titles in a similar so fashion. So what we did in merchant center was create, in merchant center there are several ways of making feeds. One of them is just manually making a feed in a Google sheet. And that Google sheet has a bunch of columns and all of those columns need um, different information like your title, your description, your price, your availability, etc. So what we did is we created the first feed we created, we picked the top 10 selling products of JBW and then kept adding 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. Uh, right now we have about 300 SKUs, but at the beginning, like the first two months, we had 20 SKUs in there and just made sure that we were, you know, um, getting some revenue back. I just, I'm just trying to picture these ads in the wild. Do they, are they like just on a white background? Are they just the simple ad, the retargeting ads that follow people around that are just on a white background? No, no. You, uh, so shopping ads, um, you go to Google right now. Uh, Got it. Looking, yep. looking I'm, I recall that was a brain fart. I, yeah. I see Google shopping ads all the time. Yeah. 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 So Google shopping is just a little, little tiny pictures of things. Yep. So you get a Google. So for example, with JBW, we have a Google search ad and we have a Google shopping ad or the same product or the same type of keyword. So if you're in the US <clears throat> and you look for um, 
men's diamond watches, you're going to get a textile and you're going to get a shopping ad for JBW. Yep. I'm on there. Cool. Okay. So this obviously, uh, you know, helped supercharge the Google shopping uh, account as as part of the overall strategy. Yeah. Uh, So that was the second piece. Uh, Third piece that we added back then was we looked at what search terms, like generic search terms, people were using to match to our shopping ads. And then we created a generic campaign on text. So that was number three. And once that started selling a decent ROAS, which is, you know, three to five, then we started adding display. So display retargeting and, and dynamic display. Um, our dynamic display is case study good. And that's why we're doing a case study. Uh, but we're, I think overall, since we started, yeah, if I look at, we started, same thing, we started display on the first quarter of uh, 2019. I'm just looking at it right now. We had a 1.33 ROAS, so it's still profitable. And then uh, by the fourth quarter of 2019, we had a 5.3 ROAS for the quarter, and it hasn't gone under that since. Um, and we leveraged two things. One of them is that feed that I was just telling you about. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, dynamic remarketing uses a, a, a feed from Merchant Center. And the other thing is uh, at just normal display ads. Um, we use responsive display ads, which are just two sizes, square and um, and landscape. But what we do is we, um, I don't know, I think I've said this before, but uh, Dave, our founder, uh, he has a huge pet peeve with bad creative on display, Google. Um, and yeah, you can see some pretty bad ones out there. But basically, you see, you know, things that look like they still, we're still in 1997. Mm. Um, even people, you, you know, um, text that doesn't fit the, the the frame, things like that. And um, and we decided that we were gonna leverage our creative team and and, and you know, be as, uh, you know, the, how the Facebook calls it, um, scroll stoppers. We said, well, we have to do the same thing with display, and we came up with pretty cool visually uh, attractive ads um, that looked out of the that, that don't look native you know how you know native advertising is like oh you you should look like the rest of the publication so that as we thought that our product should look different so that people will actually be interested in coming back and clicking um, especially this was going to be retargeting so uh, our good like our creative our, and how um, how visually appealing it is, uh, how how to do with that success and that. Do you want to transform every single touch point with your customer into the opportunity to build loyalty and trust? Do you want your customers to keep coming back again and again and again to buy from you? I bet you do. Join OXFest on September 27th to October 1st. This event will unlock fresh opportunities for you to connect with your customers, boost sales, and increase retention. With speakers from brands such as Patagonia, Mars, Zappos, and even NASA, you'll get a unique and truly original experience. Whether you are in e-commerce marketing, operations, supply chain, or customer experience, OXFest 21 is the event to join. Register now using the link in the episode description. Nice. I'm interested also, like this, this retargeting stuff is obviously going to be high ROAS, but the, the big key for me is, is actually capturing new customers and growing the top of funnel. So what were our biggest wins in growing new customers uh, okay. on Google ads? Yeah. Well, one of them, like I said, shopping, uh, because shopping is like, it, it's not branded. So, uh, and one thing we don't do at Pilot House, we don't separate our, our, our shopping campaigns in branded and non-branded. We keep them together because that keeps the algorithm more uh, information, um, on, on who your ideal customer is. It gives it more, uh, conversion information, uh, and just in general, more data, you can still separate, um, between how much revenue and how much you're spending in, in, in branded terms and non-branded terms. But at the end, um, from all our testing and from hundreds of shopping campaigns we've run, there hasn't been a single shopping campaign that we get from another client or this campaign that we started from zero um that we get that that was all divided either in you know branded and non-branded or um uh three le- I, I remember you, you I, I can't remember exactly when but at some point there was someone that that uh was recommending like dividing it in three into like uh high medium and low priority campaigns as well uh that also doesn't it all kill it breaks you're pretty much competing against yourself it breaks your budget into too many pieces it doesn't give enough information to google 
Um, so we consolidated our campaign. So that was huge um, because we started with the uh, same thing. If, I, if we go to our shopping campaigns from the beginning of time, let's call it, uh, we were spending, uh, you know, same thing. First, first quarter of 2019, we had a conversion value of 25,676 and a conversion value over cost 5.13. Uh, by uh, first quarter of 2021, we sold $743,000 and a conversion value over cost of 8.63. And about half of that is generic and about half of that is branded. So like give or take. Um, and, and a client, you know, and, and uh, is pretty happy when, when you can do that. Um, and they're just, they're also just a shout out to, to JBW. They're a pretty perfect client too. Like in terms of, in terms of the attention to detail they have on their content and also just the AOV that's possible with this product. It's, it's a real, it's a luxury item. And I feel like it's a real luxury to be promoting things at this higher price here as everything you know, as you because you just need more data uh, to gain as much resolution in today's environment, and you can just afford more data with higher AOVs. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the higher AOV, and, and a lot of people would say that it's a it's a bad thing or it's hard, but it, it actually makes your life much much easier, uh, especially with the little you know the algorithms and how we've leveraged um, Google's algorithm a little bit. You know, we have a couple of tricks in the target RAS uh, bidding system that we use. Um, and, and that that was one of the things actually that helped us expand a lot, especially at the beginning. Uh, we found a couple, you know, little, um, not tricks. We just, we figured out, you know, the algorithm wants to spend money, but if you give the algorithm, like any algorithm, right? You give it a, you give it variables. If A happens, do B. If, if C happens, then do D. So we just kind of, uh, you know, understood how algorithms work. That's the whole point of an algorithm. And then you just use that to train our algorithms to to get us more return per ad, uh, per ad spend. And that was possible because of the high AOVs. Love it. Um, one of the things that we talk about as the top of funnel for the Google ad environment is, of course, YouTube with, yep. you know, so many billions of, of, uh, of people, you know, consuming content, so many hundreds of millions of people there commuting, uh, getting content every single day. How have we folded uh, YouTube into the strategy? Um, so YouTube was... Uh, a later addition in terms of uh, everything that we've done YouTube was the last one that we added we really started going hard on YouTube on the first quarter of 2020 um, and same thing so since since then it's kind of just grown uh, both in, in, in conversion value over cost and on um, conversion value in general um, right now we're running at a 3.3 return on ad spend for, for the whole thing, like for the whole time that we've run. And currently, I mean, second quarter 2021, we were at uh, 3X and right now we're at about 4.0. Um, what did we do? I think that the secret was, again, having a good partner that um, has, uh, that's not only creative and, and is very careful about or they know what their brand is and, and they didn't, um, there are certain things, right? The whole um, Hammond Brothers, uh, Herman Brothers, Formula, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, JBW didn't uh, really follow that formula. They followed that uh, a more, um, there are two ads that work or, or types of ads that work really well with JBW. One of them is the UGC, like the scrappy, uh, creative that works on Facebook, the review stuff that worked well with JBW and YouTube as well. Just a little more uh, Polish. So D and Lucas, you know, blurry, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then another thing that worked really well is um, JBW does this thing called the uh, uh, Diamond Talk. And Diamond Talk is Amir, one of the founders, one of the two siblings, um, presenting, talking and, and going through either new watches or other watch collections, timepieces, um, and presenting them in a way that, you know, is corresponds to the brand and the brand feel and, and what, what they want their brand to look like. Um, and those have done really well for us uh, on, on, on YouTube. So having good creative, um, it ha doesn't have to be expensive creative either because um, a lot of it has been, you know, cell phone shot in the, in the UGC kind of thing. And then, uh, uh, the, the studio thing with the Diamond Talk is a little more produced, but 
it doesn't exactly follow that formula that every, you know that, that everyone's uh, going nuts about, right? So. No, yeah. For someone hyper brand conscious like a, this luxury item, they're yeah, they're, they're probably going to want a different approach than a you know a fancy yeah. toothbrush or mattress potentially. They have such a cool brand image. They have such a lifestyle focused um, you know ad portfolio that that I could see yeah that that potentially working better. Um, very cool. I just wanted to mention too, if anyone's listening, they want to know more about JBW. We did do a podcast. It's one of our first podcasts, episode 16. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can go back and check out an interview with the founders there. Um, what else? Oh, there was a, another stat here that I just wanted to ask you about cause I wasn't quite sure it was about sure. improving. It was a 23% improving or a decrease in bounce rate from low intent audience. What was that from? Oh, well, um, what we do is once we start getting, um, information back from Google, uh, you get things like audiences for observation, for example, or or we get um, things like I, I think I mentioned it in our last in, uh, in two podcasts ago when I was from here. Uh, w what we do is we look at that information coming back, so either the observation audiences or um, search term reports. Also, that I mean the basic one is search term reports, right? We negative things that uh, I'll give you a super quick example: cheap diamond watches or fake diamond watches, yep. right? So that that in, in itself, just by using your negatives properly, that you got rid of a lot of bounces because once people realize that these products are not cheap, they're going to bounce out. Um, so you can call those audiences, but also observation audiences or um, demographics in terms of where they live, uh, decreasing bids for some of the states in the, U in, in the U.S. that um, that are not, that are maybe are clicking a lot, but they're not purchasing. Uh, same with devices. Uh, we're right now, we, I mean, we've been running it for about a year and a half, almost two years, but we run a, we run an international campaign in, in the UK, the Netherlands, Canada, and uh, Germany. And uh, when we first started, we were running it also in Australia, um, I think New Zealand and a bunch of other countries in Europe, France, um, and we just started pulling them out once the information came back because we were getting clicks, but we weren't getting sales. Mm. So right now, whatever international countries we have are countries that are actually selling. And same with, we don't take any states of the union out, but we do bid up and down depending on what state of the union um, is doing better. And what a state of the union. Uh, Saul, I want to thank you coming for for coming on today. I Are we going to release this as a, when when will this case study actually be released on the Pilot House website? I think I'm working with our socials uh, team as well. Um, yeah, and uh, also we're making it pretty. So our design team and, you know, we talk a lot about our, how pretty our ads uh, are. So we just need to work on on the design part of our, of our case study to make nice. sure it's pretty. Well, we will update the podcast information with that link when we have it. We will also probably post this on the D2C group because uh, people in our group love uh, case studies like this. I just think there's so much uh, good information here about how to take a holistic approach to, to, to the Google suite. I wanted to ask just quickly about YouTube. Do you, do you notice when you put money into YouTube, into the top of funnel, when you grow the top of funnel, it must have just a massive impact on the rest of the Google products as well, whether that's shopping or dynamic retargeting, those must just grow massively. Yeah. So, uh, shopping always, when, when you, when you are, when you're spending money, even if you want to get conversions on YouTube and, and we always try to have, uh, our YouTube campaigns to, to be paid for themselves or, or make money. Um, you can see that when you turn it off, you get, uh, either less brand, you know, brand searches, uh, everyone, um, you can, you can really tell your branded search campaigns go down, uh, shopping as well and obviously on your dynamic retargeting even in your youtube retargeting it, it it's, it's super important so um it you always need to have that if if you want to you know a holistic and you have the budget it's, it's good to have that top funnel stuff black friday cyber monday could be a wild one this year for for this client particularly i imagine oh it always will yeah i mean we're looking forward to it should be good nice all right so thanks for coming on catch you later thank you bye Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can do that right now at directtoconsumer, all one word, dot co. I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C Podcast. We'll see you next time.